What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Clams. I'm Will and I'm here on the North Shore of Long Island. Um, I got my uh, my cheapo my cheapo crab net and uh, some chicken with me and what I'm looking for ultimately I mean blue crab that'd be great but I was walking on this beach the other day and I actually saw an invasive uh, English green crab and they're really bad for the environment. They eat all the uh, offspring of the blue crab and other species of crab, and they eat all of the uh, food supply for those crabs as well. And they're really prolific. They're almost like lionfish. They just breed and breed and breed, and they can't really get a hold of them. Um, they're a little bit smaller, so they're not really sought after for food here um, in America, but. That's exactly why we're going after them. We're gonna eat some if we can catch some. So I'm gonna set the trap, let it soak for, I don't know, maybe like an hour, and then uh, we'll come back and we'll check on it. So my idea is that the crab would be kind of hiding out maybe close to this grass over here, right? I don't know, that makes sense in my head. Um, so I'm going to fill this and then throw it as close to that grass as I can get and we'll let it soak. So I just have two chicken legs. I got this little, little bait bag and two chicken legs. Put those in there. string out there. <laughs> now we gotta go get it. <laughs> Wasn't planning on going in the water. Water's actually really refreshing and nice right now, so it's okay. <laughs> I thought that string was a lot longer than it is. <laughs> okay, we'll give that, I don't know, maybe an hour or two. Um, I might try to go scope out some other spots. I have another trap in the trunk and I have uh, all those blowfish heads actually. But I'm saving those for something else. But we'll see how this goes. Give it a little while, come back and give it a check. So let it soak over there for probably about 30 minutes. Um, didn't produce much. There is, uh, <laughs> there's, there's one little guy in there. And I mean little, he's very, very small. So we're gonna throw over here by the more uh, marshy area. This time I get a little better grip on the, uh, on the rope here. Not throwing too far out here. And we're going to tie to this pole over here. Give it another 30 minute soak and check back. And if nothing comes up, we'll uh, relocate to another part of the island. Also, the small guys aren't really a problem. Any green crab that we remove from the ecosystem is a good thing. So if I get a fair amount of the uh, smaller guys, I could do a recipe for them. I'd like to make a crab bisque, um, but we would need a lot. So unless that basket's filled with little guys, what I'm aiming for are crab about that big, and then I only need like maybe five. But we'll give it time and see what we come up with. Now, as I'm sitting down waiting, look at that guy. So we want a little bit bigger than that, but that is what we are after. Let's see if I can get them so that you can 
see the green of his legs there. All right, moment of truth. Um, I just saw I saw a really decent one running by. I also don't know if I really have the right trap for this. This trap probably would do better if we let it soak overnight. Um, but with all of that said, let's pull it up and see what we have, if anything. Uh, okay, there was a guy riding on top that was the size that we want. So, I'm gonna throw it back in, let it soak for a little longer, but I think he was eating through the net because he was just sitting on top there. Next time I'll uh, grab the camera to actually show you guys, but all right, that gives me, gives me a little bit of hope. Wait another 20. So losing, losing that guy on top tells me they are here. They were probably all on the outside of the trap. The minute I started pulling it, they let go. Um, well, that's the, the theory and the hope anyway. So I grabbed my other trap here. So this one sits flat like that. And then when you pull it, everything gets uh, trapped inside there. So. Got another piece of chicken, we'll clip that on, throw that one out there, and we will see if it does any better than the other trap. So the only drawback to that trap is that the chicken is out and exposed, so I know there's a lot of little fish here that'll also partake in devouring that chicken, but we'll check that same thing probably like 20 minutes or so we'll give that one a check and hopefully i mean we just need like five i'll settle for four if they're if they're a good size like the one that was on top of there set it for four okay that okay that was down there maybe for i don't know two minutes two minutes and we already got one green crab. Now I know he doesn't look too green. They can be red too, but the telltale sign, I'm gonna show you in a second, but if you can see him, they have on either side of the eye, they have five points. And this has five points, so we have one. I'm gonna pull the first trap again, and if nothing, nothing's in this trap, we'll just pull it out all together and we'll only use that other trap, because that was, that was, two minutes if that um, and there is a nice big uh, green crab in there and then this one like I said had one on top so let's see we got one small one one small one that's it just a little guy running around in there okay we're gonna switch to only that other trap so the green crab <laughs> Even though this guy is a little orange in color, uh, like I was saying, the telltale sign are one, two, three, four, five spikes there on their head. On either side of the eyes, those five spikes, that gives them away. I think you guys can see that, right? But yeah, we just need, need a few more. All right, we're on them now. Got a couple. One of them got out, but we got one more. All right, let me let me get him in because I just lost another one. But this is this is promising. Picking away, picking away. One more. There you go. Halfway decent size. All right, into the bucket. medium guy. Oop, we lost the little guy. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> so slowly but surely we are running out of tide and 
sun. It's getting a little bit late. Um, but I will stick it out to the bitter end. We have, we have a few. So I got five of the decent sized ones and then two really little guys. Um, normally wouldn't take a crab that size, but like I said, they are invasive. So we are going to take them and utilize them. Um, soaking the trap, you know, you let it soak 20, 30 minutes each time and then pull it up you reset the trap you have to wait another 30 minutes so the fact that we're only getting like one or two on a pole isn't great <laughs> um, it's not terrible but it you know we're we're chugging along here to where uh sometimes i've been out crabbing and one pole would produce like eight eight crabs so that's okay um oh, got a paddle border and then off that way, there's a guy actually uh, fishing for striper, but I haven't seen him pull up anything yet. Um, yeah, we'll do a couple more pulls and then uh, I'll see you in the kitchen. All right, one more pull here. Ah, small guy, and he's out. Oh, another small guy, bunch of small guys. I want one more big one right it's always the way <laughs> but i want one more one more decent guy we might have to throw out a little bit further uh, let that soak Let's see what we get i did the last pull and uh there was one smaller guy and that was it so I'm going to gather everything together and one of the things so right now they're in a bucket of water I don't live too far from here so I'm going to get home and put them on ice to get them to go into a stasis so that they're not moving around not dead but kind of in hibernation mode and then we're going to give them a good scrub get all the seaweed and mud and everything off them and uh, I'm actually going to leave them overnight and tomorrow morning we'll start our bisque. So. These guys have been on ice, so they're a little bit slower. And this is the way that we are going to dispatch them. Now the only thing that I am going to clean is take off the carapace, but that's going into our pot for our stock. Right here, the dead man's fingers or the uh, gills. I'm just going to pull those off because that has a bunch of stuff in it that we don't want in our stock. And then quarter it. There's a little bit of meat in there, not not too much. But the tamale and everything, that's staying in, going into the stock. I also take out the, uh, the gills, just in case there's any mud in there. But these guys are pretty clean. Okay, I'm going to clean up the rest and then we'll get the uh, stock going. So in my bisque, the second half of this is going to have carrot, celery, garlic, onion. So with this stock, normally you would see me put in all those things into the stock here. All I'm trying to extract here is the flavor of the crab. So we're not going to be putting any veg, um, just a bit of salt and a couple of bay leaf. So I have my heat on. I'm just going to saute these for a couple of minutes, warm them up, and then we'll add our water. So 
So we'll bring this up to a boil and as it's boiling, we'll take off all of this uh, scuzz off the top and we will let this then simmer for probably an hour, hour and a half. Okay, now that we've skimmed everything off, lowered it down to a simmer, and this is going to go for an hour, hour and a half, and then we'll strain it. All right, now that our broth is done, let's get our soup started. So I have this on a low heat. And let's see, we got some garlic here. And all of this is gonna be blended so I don't have to go really crazy with uh, chopping. I have one celery stalk. Seen some better days, but that's okay. Okay, one onion. Actually, I'm just going to use half of the onion because I'm going to use shallot as well. I have one shallot here. And it's okay if this browns a little bit. We actually invite that flavor. And then I have some carrots. These are peeled. Okay, these we set aside. They're not going in just yet. You know what? I am gonna throw in that whole onion. Why not? Uh oh, I got some critics over there. So now for our tomatoes, we have uh, really nice Long Island tomatoes. It's just the tail end of the season, so I figured I got to use them, right? And a lot of recipes for bis, they're going to say to use canned tomatoes. Um, just because of the extra moisture that's in the seeds, you can actually just kind of scoop out some of the seeds. You don't have to go crazy. I don't anyway. And then with the tomato, just a rough chop and put them aside as well. All right, now that all of our chopping is done and my vegetables are nice and sweated, a little bit of caramelization on them, which is what we want. We are going to add about a quarter cup of butter to the mix and some tomato paste. About a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. So we're making a roux so that our, our soup is a little bit thick. OK. 
Okay, we let that cook just for a little bit. We don't want that uh, tomato to burn. So again, I have it on medium low heat, but we want that raw flour to cook just a bit there. This has been cooking down for about a minute. We've got a little bit of caramelization there, which is a-okay. I'm gonna turn up my heat and I have uh, cognac. You could use brandy, you could use white wine, you could use whiskey. So. And that deglazes the bottom of the pan and gets all that good flavor into our mix there. And we're going to let that cook just for a minute to burn off some of that alcohol. And the way that you test that is that you smell it. And if it singes your nose a little, there's still alcohol in there. Now, little by little, we're going to add our beautiful crab stock. This already smells and looks gorgeous. We haven't even added the, the tomatoes and the carrot yet. So I'm gonna keep doing that until I've added pretty much all of our stock. Now, I'm gonna to stop towards the bottom there because I didn't use a coffee filter to strain it and there's little bits of Gel and whatnot in the bottom of this bowl so we're gonna go just until almost the bottom of that probably about six cups of stock okay now all my stock is added I'm gonna add in my carrots I uh, wouldn't be <laughs> wouldn't be a cooking segment in uh, Long Island without somebody doing yard work Okay, now I'm going to add my Long Island tomatoes. We are going to bring this up to bring this up to a boil and then down to a simmer and we're going to let it simmer for at least an hour. I can't even explain the smell coming off of this between the cognac and our super super rich crab stock. This is already smells absolutely amazing so i'm gonna let it go probably another 20 minutes it's already been going half an hour um i'm gonna let it go another 20 and then we're gonna let it cool just a little bit and put it into the blender been about an hour our carrots are nice and nice and cooked through nice and soft oh yeah Okay, so we're gonna move this into the blender I have here very carefully. Now we're gonna go back into the pot and season this, because if you recall, we haven't put any salt or pepper yet. I'm actually going to get a, a rubber spatula to clean that out because we don't want to lose any of this. One of the best things that you can invest in is one of these, a uh, rubber spatula. Because all that work you put into this, and I see people just throw this right into the sink. That was like half a bowl of soup in there, man. All right, now to this, I'm gonna add a little bit of white pepper, and then I have garlic salt. And our stock had salt in it, so this isn't gonna need too much. We'll see, I haven't decided yet. I have cracked black pepper, but we'll give it a taste and see if we want to add anything else. So I have this on a really low, low heat right now. Woohoo! Man, 
the white pepper got me. <laughs> but that is perfectly thick, perfectly smooth. Man, and it smells, <laughs> it smells crabby. Even with everything else we put in there, the predominant uh, smells are still the, the cognac and the crab. Let's give that a taste. Just a little more salt. I know it seems like I'm putting a lot in, but not a lot is coming out here, and that's more uh, more garlic than it is salt. And I'm gonna put just a little bit of the black pepper, just a touch. But the flavor on this is really, really nice. And a little more white pepper. But it's kind of nice waiting to do all your seasoning until the end so that you can really adjust it and fine tune it. Okay, let me grab a bowl. I'm gonna do just a little bit of cream in there. Some people finish with lemon. I like the cream and a little bit of parsley. There you go. Our invasive green crab bisque. Does look pretty. Let's dig in. All right, I'm going in. It is nice and hot. <laughs> Silky smooth. That cognac. Oh, we've got a plane overhead. Even with the limited amount of green crab that we caught, that stock was so, so pungent. It was really condensed. I actually let it boil on the stove probably for like an hour and a half. Um, and it, the crab flavor in this was really upfront. But man, talk about a perfect fall day. Two perfect fall days, because I got the crabs yesterday. Mmm. That is nice. Well, I'm gonna enjoy this absolutely perfect weather, the crab bisque. And we did our part in removing a couple of invasive species from the land. There's probably thousands more, <laughs> but hey, we removed a couple and that's, that's good. Well guys, if you enjoyed this episode, hit like, hit subscribe, definitely share the channel I've noticed that it's just the channel's growing beyond anything I could have imagined and I want to say thank you to everyone that leaves a nice comment that I mean even if you leave a bad comment I just I'm happy that you're watching um, it's not anything I ever thought uh, would turn into what it's turned into and I am very very thankful that you guys tune in and watch it and enjoy what I'm doing. So thank you. All right. I'm going to finish this and I will see you on the next one.